in the police station when he was being held down and the sergeant came over, um, he said the sergeant shapeshifted in front of him, turned into a reptile, um, and then came back to human and then shapeshifted again and returned. So um, then when you talk to insiders and when you look back at the texts that talk about the fact that this serpent race exists in planes unknown to man, just outside this frequency range, um, then there is a, a gathering mass of evidence that this is going on. And, and he went to the elevator. And as the elevator doors were, were closed, this guy, still at it, comes in the elevator, right in his face, get absolutely livid. And uh, he said he shapeshifted in front of me. The uh, reptilians arrived here and again began to take over instilled themselves in different places uh, underground in in the uh, earth and also this one part of them the ruling part took over and became involved in the politics and in the religion um, and started controlling through these means at that point in time you know, honestly, I've never believed that some reptilian race is running this show because, like, that'd be freaking crazy. But lately, I've been actually questioning it because you guys act like reptiles. Okay, so where do these evil beasts come from? Because you're suspicious about what's going on and you're the kind of person who realizes that people like David Icke and Alex Jones and others get it that it's non-humans behind it but where are they all coming from what's what's the source and you know what's the purpose if, if there is one if there if there even is one and that's kind of the point I want to get to here is that there is a point to it there is a source there is a reason now this is important because if you're wondering you know I mean how can this be happening we have non-humans in charge of our society okay and now you're beginning to understand a lot of people are beginning to wake up that the world is not what we thought in terms of who's running it especially with this pandemic situation because people are beginning to realize that it's not the people in control of the governments it's the governments in control of the people and people are learning that firsthand now they're starting to realize wait a minute wait a minute that's what we got, we got the protests going on but a lot of these people can't take it as far as you need to in order to understand what's happening and that is the beasts are behind it but who are the beasts okay we're talking non-humans bipedal sentient and very much superior to humans in most regards physically mentally and even in some cases hard as this is to understand morally this is why in some ways that well it, it, it's a fact that we know that the serpents are largely in, tr in charge of law enforcement and military and God wouldn't put them in charge if they were completely lawless and chaotic no they go by rules okay especially the serpents but all of them I mean the insectoids and all all of Satan's kingdom they're highly legalistic highly lawful as as hard as that is to understand especially when you got things like what I was showing in these videos their mouths are like compared to a humans it's like this big with teeth going you see that with the Harrison Ford and that, and I've seen some of the some of that demonic distortion on myself I mean it is you know you just you just it, it's it's we don't have a basis with which to wrap our heads around it but and I think that there's a reason for that and I want to get to that because you see there is a purpose there is something behind it now I know that you know what I'm gonna to get to here and a lot of you people watch my channel for the monsters and the mayhem but you don't want to listen to anything out of the scripture and this is where I'm gonna tell you you're making a mistake because here's the thing these evil beasts used to be people 
That's right. They used to be people like you and I or like angels, but essentially in a human form, even a beautiful form. And they became man-eating, horrific beasts of a fate that is so horrible, it's, it's beyond imagining. Imagine being a person that, like, like you are now, and then all of a sudden finding yourself with these claws ripping out of your hands and your skin turns into some sort of weird, who knows what, scales or a, you know, a, a crab claw or some, something like that, and then you crave human flesh and blood. Well, this isn't out of a science fiction movie. This is what happens. This is exactly what happens. It's, it's, it's not a science fiction movie plot. It's reality, okay? It's happening. And there's a reason why it's happening. You know, there's some of these people like Carl Sagan and others that are saying we're living in a holographic universe. Well, in a way, yes, that's, that's, that is true. It's, it's like a giant computer simulation. Anything is possible. It's not like everything is static. You know, for the most part, we, the way we perceive it, it is. But when you experience something where matter is instant, instantly transmuted into something else. For instance, as I recently experienced an instantaneous healing, it then opens up your mind to realize that this, it, it's like a, anything can be programmed into it and all of a sudden it can become reality. You can turn into anything. And what's happening here Okay, if you're interested in the monsters and the beasts and the scary ripping apart of humans and the, the horror stuff, and that's why you're, you know, you're watching the Richard Bruce channel, but you're not listening to the words, the key that's behind it, you're kind of missing the boat here, is what I'm trying to get at here. Because if you're someone who ignores God, you're going to miss the fact that this whole holographic universe was constructed by this fellow. This, this character that we're reading about called God. He, he lays it all out for us in, in a difficult to read and understand and, and contemptible to follow. It is. Don't, don't underestimate the difficulty of it. You just you don't want to do it. You want to watch a movie. It makes you, reading the Bible just makes you tired and it's, it's incomprehensible and it's just, you know, it's not your fault. You can't understand it or can't pay attention to it because it really is hard to, to pay attention to. But for those who will, there really is a, a more positive outcome. Because if you're someone who just says, you know what, I just want to hear about the monsters. I don't want to, I don't, you know, the Bible and stuff. Get that out of my face. Because I, I just don't like to read it, you know. And it's, I, I don't want to pay attention to it. And okay, maybe there's a God and everything. And all right, maybe I'll, you know, now and again, I'll uh, think of this or that. Or maybe do a little praying or something like that. Or go to church with a friend or something like that you're going to end up one of these beasts. Yeah, that's right. And it's not going to be very pleasant. Or you'd be eaten by one. Or end up in, 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 a, in a situation that's even worse than all this stuff. Hell. And it's real. And just like Angelica Moro said, souls are falling down into that place like sand daily. And that is even more horrible than ending up a beast. Because I think actually the beast ends up getting thrown in there eventually because Satan and all of his beasts, his, his fellow angels, get thrown into the lake of fire. And, you know, you say, oh, this is too horrible. It's too horrible to, to even be true. This can't be true. You know, this can't be true. But those of us who have paid attention, comparing what we're reading in the Bible with what's happening and using our brain with it, we know this is real. This is really happening, okay? This is not some nightmare that somebody, you know, dreamt up and then used it to scare little kids so that people give their money for a church. No. See, these churches are fake, okay? Alex Jones understands that. Um, and don't let that fool you because the word itself is true. It's just that most people misinterpret it. And then as they preach about it, they mislead people by saying all these wrong things about it. For instance, the once saved, always saved doctrine. You're not once saved, always saved. 
when you believe in Jesus Christ, you just, you know, you heard that story, he dies on the cross for your sin, and then you say, okay, all right, I'm going to say a little prayer, all right, Father, save my soul in Jesus Christ so that I can go to heaven, and then you believe that, that's an opportunity, okay, it's a chance, it's a, it's a, it's an entry point, but you got to show yourself worthy in the meantime, and how you're going to show yourself worthy is by showing God who you just said that you have hope in, that you're going to pay attention to what he's saying, even though it's hard, okay? He's meant it to, he made it so that it's hard. He made it so that you, you want to go to the ball game. You want to pay attention to your racing hobby, whatever it is that you love. You want to do that instead. You don't want to sit at home and read the scripture, especially on the Sabbath day, on Saturday. That's when everybody's rocking out and having fun. But all those people who are rocking out and having fun are going to end up lizard food or insectoid food or pigoid food. Yeah, you got pigs. See, all these animal gods that you see in these Egyptian paintings, they were once people like us, except, except maybe more powerful like angels, but in human form and sometimes with wings. But then they were turned into beasts because they chose to look away from God. I don't want to look at the Bible. It's, it's, you know, I, don't want to, I don't want to pay attention to God. I don't, want to, I don't want to follow God's rules. Boom! You turn into a hideous monster that craves human flesh and blood and you're, you're, you're so ugly and disgusting and horrible and you're, and you're filled with dread as you, as you crave to, to eat human flesh and you're a monster and feared and hated and you have to keep your life secret. You have to, you have to be, live in, in total fear and secrecy all the time like these beasts have to do for the time being. There's coming a time as... Jeremiah 31, 27 tells us, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will sow the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the seed of man and with the seed of beast. This means not pigs and donkeys are going to be counted as, as fellow people in the, in the kingdom of God. No, this means the sentient beasts that are also out in the cosmos, and many of them are living here of all kinds. Insectoids, canines, felines, you name it. But the important thing for you to know now is that if, if you just want to entertain yourself, if you just want to have a good time, if you're not willing to give God a little bit of attention, okay, he's not really asking too much. That's the, that's the thing I want to tell you guys, you know, that are, you just, you know, you just want to see the, the monsters. Don't, don't give me anything. I, I, I don't want to read the scripture. You know, um, he's really not asking that much. He, it, 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 just think of it as a man who says, who says to you, look, I got a deal for you, okay? If you're willing to follow my rules and learn a bit about me so that you can be fitting for a place where you don't have to deal with any of this crap, then you can get in. But if you're not even willing to just give me a little bit of time just to, to, to pay attention, you know, kind of like in school, but you, you know, you can do it. What I'm, what I'm trying to tell you here is you can do it. It's not, it's not that hard. You can at least show God that you're willing to pay attention and or pay attention to somebody who, who is able to understand what's going on, at least, to, at least enough to talk about it for something halfway interesting to pay attention to. But as I have taught and what I have found after studying the Bible backwards and forwards is just two basic things that you need. The faith of Jesus Christ, that's just, you said to yourself, okay, I'm going to believe that God is good as his word, that he died on the cross for my sin. Okay, I believe in that. That's one. And two, obeying the Ten Commandments. And everybody knows the Ten Commandments. It's in Exodus 20, in case you haven't found that in, in the Scripture. In Exodus 20. And it's the, the basic stuff, I mean, it's, it's, it's really common sense stuff, but there's some stuff that's not common sense, okay? Like, for instance, the coveting thing. Because you wouldn't know about, about coveting. Coveting is like when you look at what somebody else has, doesn't matter what it is, and you just, there's a, in, instead of being happy with what you have, you're just kind of resentful and focusing on it and you just you kind of obsess over it but but this isn't something that's that's so much of a conscious thing it is a conscious thing but it's it will what I'm trying to tell you is that it will kick in automatically once you once you've decided I want to pay attention to God which is God's word you want to pay attention to it and then you follow it and as you live your life following it 
and it begins to change your behavior. It will change your behavior. You won't be as cool with all the friends hanging out, smoking weed, and, and you know, partying and all this stuff. But what you'll have is something way better. And if you pay attention to that, you'll automatically fall into a situation where you won't be one of those people and you'll notice it. I, I notice it with people all the time, the, the, this covetousness. And it's not, you know, like, like they'll, they'll come and say, oh, that's very nice what you have there. Oh, well, maybe I should get one. And they're just being real nice and com complimenting you. And, you know, you say, oh, yeah, thank you. That's, that's nice. but, but when you gain discernment through God's word, you, you, you can see that, that they don't have what you have which is having paid attention to God's word you come you come away from the spirit of the world because you get one of two spirits see this is this is the really hard thing to get but it's the basics of what's happening here you're in one of two spirits friends you're in God's spirit or you're in Satan's spirit and Satan's spirit is the default okay that's you know and and you see, you say, well, you know, no, no, I don't, I don't have Satan's spirit by default. I, I do my own thing. I'm not worshiping no devil. No, no. You gotta understand. You get a an indwelling spirit. It doesn't, it doesn't matter if you know whether it's there or not. But, but you will become conscious of all that once you choose God, which is choosing to pay attention to His Word, choosing to, to read it, choosing to, to bring it into your mind. Even though it's kind of hard. Oh, I just want to enjoy myself today. Oh man, I don't want to read this. Ugh, good word of God, it's so boring and, and drab, and it speaks against everything I love. It does. It speaks against everything I, I personally love. But uh, what, you'll, what you'll begin to realize is, as you pay closer attention to it, and as you start to kind of move yourself away from Satan's spirit, because it's, it's a process, you move yourself away from his spirit towards God, is that there's something that's foreign to us because what we've been born into, what's been comfortable. I lived, I grew up here in Los Angeles, Hollywood movies. Satan is right. Satan is my neighbor. He, I grew up with Satan. Satan is my, you know, the spirit that I was was born into, and that's something I feel comfortable with. You know, Lucifer's pizza, yeah. You know, all the all the stuff that's and, and his spirit that I've that I've grown up with. I I am a product. I am a Satan's child, or I was, and and I and I would have been, and in some ways I still am because that that spirit is some of those areas of my city, as Derek put it, is still under the control of the devil. It's there. It's it's a part of me, but I've decided to move away from it, and and I encourage you to do the same. But you, but in order to do that, you have to do a little bit of hard work. That's what I'm trying to tell you here. You got to do a little bit of hard work. But you know what? It's going to be so worth it. It's going to be, and you're going to realize what that is. You're going to realize, okay, yeah, I'm giving up some fun for now. But you're going to realize that these these little lives that we're living, they're so short. They're so very short. It, it, it's like, you know, we, we, the, the reincarnation thing, whether you want to believe it or not, I believe it. I believe it's biblical. But you're, it's, it's, it's like a moment. But important now because of those of us who are here in the world, we know that this is God's world. There's a lot of other worlds out there and all kinds of other stuff happening. But we know that this is God's world and you have an opportunity to come into something that's so much better than what's happening out there. Oh, those people having fun in the secret space program. Ooh, spaceships with William Tompkins and all that stuff and aliens and, and life extension and all kinds of cool technology. And it's there. It's happening. They, they, have, they have free energy. They have all this stuff happening. They have all this uh, great stuff happening that's just so much better than what we have here. But what I'm trying to tell you is we, if, if you're willing to do a little, a little bit of self-sacrifice here, Realizing, because that's, that's the thing. I'm trying to tell you, I'm, I'm just a regular guy like you. I, I love to have fun. and I mean, you know, I love, you know, chicks and drugs and, and whatever else it is, hobbies, having fun and motorcycles and surfing and all that stuff. I love all that stuff, man. I love it. But I, I, I'm a regular guy like you, but I, I, I realized, because see, it's, it's just a secret. It's like once you know it, once, once it's, it's, in your mind, you can't forget it. You, you you realize, holy cow, there's no going back because there there's something so much better, and you're aware of something so much worse befalls people who won't make that sacrifice now. That's why I'm encouraging you: make that sacrifice now. Read God's word. Bring it into your mind. 
you know, don't be someone who just says, ah, you know, I just want the, the fun and the monsters and the movie that entertains me and, you know, something that's, that's, that's fun and not, you know, boring. You've got to switch your mind, switch your mind from realizing that, that all you want to do is have fun to realizing that there's something so much better. And that's what I'm trying to tell you, friends. There is something so much better. There is something that's worth it. There is something that's, that's worth setting aside your personal joy because the, the consequences are so much worse. Satan was someone who said, I, hey, I, I want to do it my way. I don't want to do it God's way. Okay, You've been made by God. You're, you're in a do or die situation. You've got to do, which is tell God, okay, I, I, I'm going to pay attention. I'm going to do what you say. I'm going to sacrifice my own personal desires for now, which are all wicked and stupid and lame compared to what we're going to get in the future, the all-glorious within, Psalm 45, the all-glorious within. Then you don't have to worry about your sin nature once you've been converted. For now, we have to be careful because we're in that sin nature, plus we have Satan's spirit, plus we grew up in Satan's kingdom and domain where everything that Satan is cool and you can drive a cool car and you can be accepted by people and have lots of friends and everything and and you'll have money and you'll have acceptance no but but see that's that's for the stupid people be a smart person realize all that is just is is petty cash compared to the millions you can get with God and you won't be turned into a hideous beast, which will, by the way, the, the the friends of God coming up here after the great tribulation. And there's there's the you know the rapture and all this stuff happening, and then after all the dust settles and everything, every Sabbath day for a while, it's not going to be forever, but it's going to be for a while. All the people that were smart are going to are going to get a a roadside tour of hell where all the people that were stupid and wanted to live it up and have a good time and be accepted by everybody and have lots of money and everything's cool and everything and, and they're going to look upon those people who are being tormented in that place of torment they, they, and, and, and worms crawling over them and, and people turning into skeletons just like a, a horror movie but it's real and these people are like please please let me out for just a second just a moment I'll, I'll, I'll be good I'll, I'll come back I'll, 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 I'll do it right this time I won't sin but it's too late once you die once you've shown God that you're not going to pay attention to Him, you're just going to say, "No, no, God, I don't want to listen to you." And uh, you know, you, if you make that choice, you're going to be there, and these other people are going to be looking at you, going, "Oh man, dude, I, I told you, man. You know, you got to sacrifice yourself a little bit for now. You got to read a little bit of God for now." Okay, read God's Word and, and pay attention to those people who are talking about Him, so that you can learn something, because you got to learn how to make it. And if you, if you just set your mind to it, you know, I'm going to set aside some of my personal fun for now and, and realize that just, just, by, just by doing that, it's not that hard. That's the thing. That's what you're really going to be kicking yourself. Those people are going to be kicking themselves. Huge time, dude. I mean, it's like mega. I mean, it's going to be like, God, when you, see, when you see that you could have just paid attention to God for a little bit, it wasn't that much. It wasn't that much. Yeah, maybe if you think that this life is all you have, and it's just a short little life, and there's, you come back all these times, just a short little life. But this now is the judgment. We're coming up on the end. This is the final judgment of souls. A long, long time has passed. And now this is a, a great culmination. It's not just, you know, 6,000 years. That's, that's just when the advent of the Jews, God's priests, came to offer this this thing of eternal life but it's been going on for billions of years all this stuff adventures and lives and 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 all this stuff happening for just an incredible long period of time and now we're at the very end of it and it, we're coming up on judgment but now is your chance in this life anybody can make that choice friends anybody can you just say you know what i'm i'm going to i'm going to listen i'm going to i'm going to accept jesus christ's offer because that's that's the whole thing about the cross you know the cross you see in the church it's, it's because he it, there was a ceremonial sacrifice of god's son to, in order to as a as a sacrifice as a means as a covenant as a way in it's a doorway is all it is it's a doorway it's just it's just god saying with this sacrifice that look if you want to believe in this i'll let you in to a place where there's no more death no more pain, and check this out, friend. This here's here's the real big one. No more sorrow. 
okay? No more sorrow and no more fear of death, okay? But only joy in our heads forevermore. Think about how cool that's going to be. And the people who who are are down in hell and 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 then and then the, every Sabbath day it says in Isaiah 66, the last line of Isaiah 66, 66 it says they're going to walk by and they're going to say, you know, dude, I mean, you know, you didn't have to do that much. I mean, you know, because these lives are short and you know, look at me, I'm just, I mean, I'm not like living a terrible life. It's not as fun as a lot of other people. I'm a little bit more sober, a little bit more more serious. And, uh, you know, maybe I'm not, you know, going to the beach as much or, you know, partying out with friends and stuff. You know, I have to kind of be solitary for a while because solitary tends to be a lot of what is the sacrifice. And so, um, and, and a little bit more sorrowful now. But you see, it's, that is, 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 is tiny. It's tiny in comparison to an eternity where you don't have to worry about all this horrible, horrible stuff that can happen to you, even if you have a pretty good, lucky, rich, happy life. There's all kinds of still, it's all kinds of horrible stuff that, that you're even afraid of happening to you. Think about this, friends, a life where you're not afraid of sickness, of accident, of your loved ones getting hurt. Just, just think about life free of that, and then you're with all your friends and family all the time. No one's around who you don't trust because we have a unifying source. Okay, just think about that. And think about, is that worth it? To just sacrifice a little bit of time from the monsters and the fun and, and the stuff that keeps your attention. Yeah, uh, monsters, yeah, all right. And the, and the horrible stuff happening, yeah. And the, and the you know, the aliens and, the, you know, and the, and the ancient stuff that's weird, you know, and everything. And, uh, but, 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 but just, just a little bit of attention to God's Word. And, and you could have something so much better. Think about that, okay? Something so much better that it's it's and it's real. It's not a fantasy. This isn't like some some pie in the pie in the sky fantasy. It's real. And so I encourage you to get it. Just pay attention to God just a little bit. You know, honestly, I've never believed that some reptilian race is running this show because, like, that'd be freaking crazy. But lately, I've been actually questioning it because you guys act like reptiles. I remember a lizard man hmm. in that office. They transport bodies, body parts, and astral humans to Mars and to Orion. And they're tra they traffic in these. It's a big, big commerce. In, uh, we are their whole life. Orion, Mars, and and this, which are their two main bases of operation. They come from Orion. Mars they own. They have huge detention centers and huge meat lockers. Most of the people who die are taken to Mars and put and they they have hanging pens where they then kill them again astrally in these hanging pens. I think they probably are raping people while they're getting ready to be hanged because that is tremendous fear. But we, we don't, we're still in this lockdown, so much of what we think is going on is a lie. The thing was that while I didn't know what was going on, there, look at it this way, you've got all these people abandoned in this gloomy, predatory world. They never see anyone leave, ever. They have children there. There are, it's a prison state. They don't see God, they don't see, you know. They, they're attacked by demons, reptilians at night. They have that. And in the last couple of years, they're hunted for food now. They're, they're, it's gone from bad to a nightmare. People fall into the, to the abyss. And it was not like a thousand or two thousand. It was like the sand of the ocean without number. If you're watching this, it's not too late. Say this prayer now. Father in heaven, please save my soul by the work of your son Jesus on the cross and show me your pure words in the authorized King James Bible.
Raptors! Raptors!